in the joy of Easter, let us thank God for the graces we receive. Let us pray also who during the Holy Tridium they were killed because they are Christian in Kenya. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seed of wisdom, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this morning we reflect on the very important subject in sociality, economy. The economy. Uh, that uh, if you listen to the speech of the politician, the word we most often listen to is economy, economy, economy. So it is, we have to situate our economy in a personalist uh, philosophy. Uh, the, the philosophy proposed by the church in the regard of social ethics is a philosophy centered on the human person. So economy must be aligned with the human person. That is the synthesis of the class this morning. Huh? The, the center of economy is the human person. Who, who produces economy, who produces economy is man. Who is at the center of economy? Man. And who is at the end of economy? Man. In fact, man is pervading economy. Economy is at the service of man. And on man, at the service of economy. That is, I think, the best expression, no? Men at the, at the economy at the service of man, and non-men, not men, at the service of economy. So, uh, you have an excel, I will follow that uh, chapter here for my class this morning. That chapter here in Compendium is excellent. You know that book is the synthesis, uh, official, official synthesis of the teaching of the Catholic Church in regard with social ethics, uh, justice. And that book is a must. It is on the computer, you can have that free, from the download from the Vatican, you can transform that into Word if you want. We have many possibilities, there is nothing impeding you to use the text and to uh, transform the text for your own uh, usage, and your personal interest. Okay, so that first idea, what is economy? So the, uh, the first thing, economy is the science of the means to the service of all men. The science of the means at the service of the means, at the service of man no? to attain is all his dimension, no? all his dimension, including his temporal and eternal happiness. That is economy. Economy is essentially a means. It is not an end. Capitalist made economy an end. A progress for progress. More money for more money, you know. And you have the, the same teaching here uh, in the Shell Agenda. Uh, the texts here are taken from the encyclical of the popes and from the text of Vatican II. You have a mind here. Huh? You have to preach or to teach or to uh, meet uh, people committed to business. You should use those things. You know, our founder, Father Menard, who created that seminary here at the college, uh, <coughs> work with businessmen. He was preaching as a young uh, Franciscan, and they have a retreat every year for businessmen. The richest people in the, the <coughs> province, men there, with Father Menard and the reflect. Because, you know, to be a businessman is not a sin. <laughs> we, can go, we can be a good Catholic, we can be a holy man and, be, and a very efficient businessman. And the businessman is the one who takes care of the common good for the good of others, not only for his own pocket, that is the problem, huh? you know, personalism huh? for the person. So the morality of economy, in fact, economy is essentially moral. Economy is essentially ethical, contrary to communism and to liberalism, they say economy is outside of religion, outside of ethics, 
hundred. No, we have to affirm that economy is, uh, I, I say, essentially moral, ethical. Why? Because uh, it is order to the good of man and society. The end of economy is for man and for society. So because there is an end, and that end is essentially moral, man is ethical reality, a moral reality, uh, the good of man, the good of society, so therefore uh, economy is necessarily uh, under the, the scope, if you want, <laughs> under the direction of ethics. Economy is ethical, must be moral, must obey uh, natural law, must respect, etc., the man, etc. Okay. So that it, in order, uh, it is to serve man, to serve the society, uh, in order to help society, to help men, uh, to attend the last end. Finally, for us, always the last end. Huh? Because we know that we are not only on earth forever. You can look, when you pass it from the cemetery, uh, those people are not on earth, they are elsewhere. <laughs> huh? So we are only temporarily <coughs> on earth. So that is number 330, three, huh? what I told you now. Now, number 331, 331. I will explain the, the paragraph by paragraph. Huh? The first is the, the second, 331. So the relation between morality and economics is say, necessary and intrinsic. Econ moral ethic is not extrinsic to economy. It is intrinsic. Why? Because it is in the end of the means to attain the good of the people. You know? So economy, essentially, in its essence, uh, intrinsically, is necessarily at the service of man. If there is no man, there is no economy. Did you ever saw, did you ever see economy among cats, <laughs> among dogs, among horses? No. Of course, a squirrel is able to prepare the winter by collecting a, a corn, huh? but that is not economy. It's a kind of economy, but that is the same thing. Huh? Economy is only by men and for men. So per, per, economy is essentially a personalist reality. And that is totally opposed to the two systems we studied before, because they affirm the contrary. They affirm there is no link between ethics and, uh, and, and economy, because economy is a science, and it is determined by the condition of the market, the condition of the <laughs> physical situation, etc. Hmm? So morality and economy are distinct. Of course, like the end and the means are distinct. Huh? But they are, there is no separation between these two spheres of activity. Uh, the, the, the activity, moral activity, is the activity of man as tending toward his happiness, his good, perfect good, huh? perfect realization. And economy is a means to attain that. You know, I can be a good pianist if I have no piano, I cannot play. So man is the pianist and economy is the piano. And we need economy. Economy is a necessity. We cannot live in society without economy. Why? Well, first of all, economy comes from oikos in Greek. Huh? Oikos means <coughs> house, home, huh? house, home. And many in means to manage, management. So essentially, economy is, a money, is the organization of the house. And the house of people is a family, the house of people is the society, and now the house of people is the old earth. Because now we are depending on one, uh, we cannot live it. Nobody now on earth can live without China. <laughs> and nobody can live without the United States. We are linked one one the other. Huh? United States, Canada, Russia are linked with Peru because of co of copper. You know, there is continually we are together, and be, because we are together, we must have a special conduct uh, of being together 
trading together. We need. We cannot live alone. It's impossible. No man is an island. So economy is a necessity. An economy is good. Uh, that, but you, sometimes, no, economy is not bad. It's good. It is good. It is a necessary mean to live in society. It is a necessary mean to attend the common good. But, but the, the, the problem is when we put economy at the end and people at the service of economy, now we change completely the situation. So there is, not, uh, uh, there is no separation and there is necessary reciprocity. Uh, economy and man is, in fact, the maker of economy is man. Like, for example, uh, when a carpenter used a hammer, but the hammer did not make itself. It was made by another man, you know. So uh, the, 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 hammer, the hammer we use is also uh, humanized by the one who did that. It's not a, uh, uh, it's not a natural uh, tool. It is a tool made by man. So economy is a tool made by man. Huh? It is, uh, uh, we, you know, when, uh, uh, who is a good carpenter? Who is a good pianist? Who is a good guitarist? It is the one who have a good relation with his instrument, no? If I have a good relation with my guitar, or my piano, or my saw, or my hammer, I can do something good. Economy is that. Movers, but a good relation. Not opposed. And the law of poverty is not again the economy. And the law of poverty in your congregation, on the contrary, is to be the best uh, user of, of the common good. Uh, economy. The law of poverty is not to condemn economy. The law of poverty is to use well economy to the service of the, of the family, of the religious family, uh, etc., of the church. So they have in common uh, the dignity of the human person and the complete vocation of the human person. So the dignity of the human person. <coughs> the end of economy is the respect of the human person huh? and its complete vocation. When we speak about the complete vocation of man, it is to be happy on earth, huh? to have a comfortable life, <coughs> to live in justice and peace on earth. And also his vocation is after death. The more eternal life, huh? that is the word. Economy is as a great, as, it's a great thing if we think about the end of economy. Economy is a tool. It can serve to, for the good, but unfortunately, it can serve also for the bad, huh? for selfishness, for greed. Instead of serving others, we serve ourselves. Huh? That is it. <coughs> and then, um, so the, 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 the economy is not only for one person, one by one, it is also for the, all the person together. Huh? In fact, in a family, the mother takes care of each child one by one, but at the same time for the whole family. Huh? So economy is global, is holistic. Huh? It's not for only a sector of the population, it's not only for the few one, it is for the old person, a, 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 Paul the Six has a good expression, huh? it is the development of the old person and the old person, everyone, huh? all and all. Develop the body, intellect, the soul, huh? and develop everyone. Okay? That is the goal of economy. In fact, economy is the same goal as progress. The progress, the development of economy is the to allow man uh, to be complete, uh, to be perfect in his personality and to attain his end. Okay. So man is, the text says something interesting, is the source, the center, and the purpose of economy. Is the source, the center, and the purpose of economy. Uh, is at the beginning, in the middle, at the end. <laughs> is everywhere. You remember the end, huh? the final cause is pervading everything. That means when I begin to do something, I do that because I have a goal. Huh? So the man is the source of economy, the one who makes economy. There is no economy without man. Even somebody has goal, 
money, if nobody works for him, he will not. Money does not pro produce by itself. In fact, when money produces, it is through the, the, the work of the worker. Huh? It is at the center. It is, it consume, for example, not only man produces, man con consume. Huh? Cons consumption uses the, th the product, buy the product. Huh? And finally, it is for the purpose of them on earth and after his death. Huh? So, conclusion, ethics is, ethic, excuse me, economy is essentially ethical, ethic, huh? moral. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, economy alone cannot fulfill uh, the desire of happiness. So, economy is not the unique mean for man to attain his goal. It's one among the means. So is there is a why when we speak about economy as a Christian, we must not exclude the other means. You know? There are other means than money to be happy. Uh, in the proof of that, we have somebody, they are very rich and they are unhappy. They, die, they, have, they lack of love, for example. Or they don't have a good health. So the, to be happy for a man, it doesn't need to have money. It is to have a good health. Uh, somebody, they are ready to pay billions of dollars to, to be cured from a cancer. Huh? Health, huh? and also reputation, and also the love of a family, all that is a value, which means to attain the perfect, uh, uh, or the most perfect happiness we can have. And among them, economy is a mean. Huh? Is a mean. So, um, that the, <laughs> you have the production, huh? the distribution and the consumption, the three operations of economy, the three dimensions of economy. Huh? We have the production, we have the distribution, trade, huh? industry, yeah, production, industry, distribution, trade, huh? market, and finally consumption. Um, some consumer. Huh? The consumer, those who use those products, they are the three dimensions of economy. And the three dimensions of economy are at the service of man and the old man. Huh? So for men, if you want, we can use a, an analogy with the triangle. <laughs> Like being, remember, being, huh? being right? economy. <laughs> economy implies production. Economy implies distribution. And economy implies consumption. Why consumption is a part of economy? Because if there is no consumption, economy fell, falls down. And a good example of that is Gandhi in India. Huh? Gandhi in India. When you wanted to get rid of the British, what they do? They stop consuming. They say, no more you buy Chinese product. If, imagine if America, Europe decide that, poor Chinese, they will come back to their little bowl of rice. Huh? Mm -hmm. Why? Because economy implies consumption. And you know, a large part of economy is consecrated to advertising. Why advertising? To provoke consumption. You know? <laughs> it's a part of the economy. Uh, if you go to the market, uh, if somebody wants to, to sell his product, they will say, hey, good strawberry, the best in Vermont, the best in Connecticut, you know. Why? To provoke mm -hmm. consumption. And we are naive, we accept, we say, oh, they are the best. But the others say, hey, the best are made in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. So, next paragraph, number 332. <laughs> 332. Three, two. <coughs> the moral dimension of the economy shows that two things. Economic efficiency and the promotion of human development are one and divisible part. So first, economic efficiency. You know, 
economy is, is by nature, is, the, is this, uh, to produce something, to be efficient. Huh? If, we, if I have an armor, I cannot use it to, to fix the nail. I, I, will, I, will, uh, I will get rid of my armor. Economic efficiency and promotion, the promotion of human development. In solidarity. That is an idea important in the church. Huh? Solidarity. But if you put that together, so they are one. An indivisible good. That means one, the economy is uh, producing something in relation with the good development of man, uh, in, in, in not for only one man, in, in, but the man together, solidary as a man. It is indivisible good. It is a good. Economy is a good, but is a good when it is united with the human development. Uh, with human de in, in solidarity. Why in solidarity? Because we can have an economy without solidarity. That happens sometimes in some capitalist country. We have a very rich class and we have a lot of very poor. That is not solidarity. That is not an indivisible good. It is a divisible God, good because the good of the poor and the good of the rich are not the same good. There is no common good. So it is important that economy works with the development in solidarity. That means no social classes. Of course, they will be always rich, they will be always poor in every society, but the majority is taking benefit of the uh, the wealth of the nation, the wealth of the country. Okay? That is uh, the uh, economy. Economy life, in fact, economic life, <laughs> economic life is moral, we saw that just before, huh? is moral when it is linked, what is inspired, inspired by justice and solidarity. In solidarity for a Christian, we can say under that charity, love. <coughs> so, Economic life is moral, attain its goal when it is inspired, when it is enlightened, when it is uh, animated by justice. You know, the virtue of justice is animated every, every human virtue. Every human virtue to be a virtue must be just. I told that in the past, when they spoke about a saint, they say he was a just man. Huh? So justice and Solidarity. There is, a, a, in fact, we can summarize the teaching of the church in a few words. One of the words is justice, of course. The other is solidarity. And the third one, we see that, subsidiarity. Huh? Another one will be free control, free market. Huh? And with that, I just wait, etc. So all those ideas are very simple. In fact, you can summarize very clearly the teaching of the church. Huh? Economic life inspired by justice and solidarity is a moral value. So the man who is working in economy, and he works in a just way, in solidarity with the poor, huh? with those who are in need, etc., he is a moral man. 
And as a Christian, I will say he's a, he's a saint. To what is to be a saint? To practice justice and love? No. <laughs> well, sometimes we have a, a, a wrong idea of businessmen. We are inclined that all businessmen are, are greedy. Huh? They want to make money. Yes, they want to make money, but not only for themselves. I have a great admiration for one of the richest men in the United States, Mr. Buffett. Buffett huh? Mr. Buffett is a billionaire. And he said, I consecrate the half of my, my, my profit to, not to charity, to create, uh, to create job, to create employment, to give people a way to live by themselves, not only one day, but the, all their life. You know, to have the preoccupation huh, the, of, of, of the other. And all that, all that is efficiency, but it is social efficiency. What gives a value to economy is not economic uh, success in itself. It is when the success of economy is uh, spread uh, on, uh, on the other social efficiency. Social efficiency. If, uh, for example, an industry in a country is a real factor of development of the country, help the people to have job, uh, that is social efficiency. So the, we have to change our way of thinking about the economy. Because when you look at the, the budget of your countries, what do you see on it? Numbers, numbers, numbers. Huh? We say, ah, now we are growing in the economy. We are making more money. But where is going the money? That is the problem. What is going the money? Is the money is going in solidarity with the poor, with the ivory people, create jobs, etc. Uh, helping family to live a comfort life, that is social efficiency. Otherwise, it is not social efficiency, it is evil. It is selfishness, it is a part of the society, they want to become richer and richer and richer and richer. And who made them rich? The consumer. Who is the consumer? Joe Blow. The poor. The poor need to buy, to buy cereals. The poor need to buy bread and both make rich. So the, you know, the richness must be social efficient. Must have a social efficiency. That is the criterion of the success of a country. A country is prosperous, prosperous not because it produces many things, because its population is able to share in the prosperity of economy. If economy is only favoring a class, a part of the society, it is immoral. Huh? John Paul II called that social sin. It's a social selfishness. We want to make a class very rich and we don't bother with the other. And that is not a, a, it's not a fake what I told you. If you visit many countries and many other parts of the world, you will see that. You will see people excessively rich and at the same time a few, a few uh, feet, a huh, few meters from that, very poor. So maybe you have that own experience. It is good to work and around the world to discover that, you know. Even here in the United States, if you go to West Virginia, it's not uh, the same thing as in Maryland, huh? or uh, as in Alexandria, as uh, um, uh, West, uh, Virginia. It's two, two, two different levels of society, okay? So the production is good, huh? of good is morally, is a moral duty. Not only is a social efficiency, the church said that economy huh, is a moral duty. Protection for the good, for the good, huh, is a moral duty. It is a duty for the rich, for the capitalist, those who possess the means of production, to work for the common good, common good, to favor laws, not enrich them to favor laws that can help everybody to go to university, to have access to the hospital, etc. To have some good vacation once a year. <laughs> it's funny, it's interesting to compare the economy of many countries. Some countries, they exalt the money. Other countries, they exalt vacation. If you go to France, vacation, vacation, paid. At least when you begin first year, three weeks of vacation paid. Up to five paid. 
So you can live with your children. Fast vacation with your children. You know? It's another philosophy. It's not to buy a new car every year, it's to eat well and to be one like children in vacation. You know? <coughs> other, they insist on the other value, on war, and they buy for war, they buy for tank, for a plane. Huh? Okay? So otherwise natural resources will be wasted. And God gave man the nature, huh? the dominion of our nature for what? For the service of man. We are the responsible, and now we have a new science since about 20 years, and we call it ecology. Ecology. What is ecology? It is the science of the house. <laughs> Eco, don't forget, eco means house. Huh? Is this, what is our house? It is our planet. Huh? Our planet. And I told you, for example, what happened now in Brazil, where they destroyed forests, to make corn and to make corn not to feed cow and people, but to, to feed the cars. The consequences are horrible because we destroyed the lung of the earth. Yes, brother. Oh, Father, there's a question that struck me that, you know, people, we, we as human beings, we share the same planet, you know, we share, we share the same resources of, you mm -hmm. know, of the planet. But in fact, the, uh, the use of, 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 of that, Sharing that resources is not it's not the same like like for the Western world using for like most the most part is the, while you know African and Asian and other part of the world should use one third. You touch the big problem, hmm? <coughs> the big problem of international <coughs> relation, international economy, <coughs> and you know no, Africa. <coughs> Uh, the, the, it's a huge continent, huh? huge. Right. They control only 2% of the economy in exactly. the world. 2%. How can we talk, you know, as... But the fact, oh, China, 60 years ago, was almost not on the international uh, trade. China was, a, was, was not ex existing in China. Mm -hmm. But today, you, you know... know mm -hmm. Philosophically, they, they say, well, we can use any means to, you know, to, to provide those. <laughs> now you touch a big problem in, uh, in ethics. Can the end justify <laughs> the means? Of course, I, I, as a good Marxist, you can say yes. As a good capitalist, you can say yes. As a good Christian, you can say, you must say no. no. <laughs> I mean, all the time, don't forget the, the, primary, the primary end of the means of production the primary end of economy, the primary end of material resources is for men. All men. But Not for someone, for some, for some wallets, you know? But how do we, you know, we talk about international, you know, um, social justice, well, in, while in fact we don't, you know, we don't have that uh, standard to defy it. You know, <laughs> You know, we must be patient. Huh? International organization exists only officially, well, 1948, 45. You know, what is this in the history of the world? Huh? Of course, we want to change, it is good, we want to change the situation. I'm the first one to change that. But we, well, little by little, little step, step by step. The situation for here in the United States is much better for the poor than it was in 1929. But it is not good in comparison of those who have excessive riches, you know. Sometimes I say, uh, you, uh, uh, United States, uh, uh, what you want in, a, uh, in one week, that takes sometimes one month or one year for other countries to have the same thing. Huh? Okay, that is, the, is the, a very touchy question. But what is interesting in your question, you are awakened to that. You know, what is the, the goal of that class of ethics, social ethics? It's to make you conscious of the problems. If the priests, if the Catholic, they, even, they women are conscious of the problem, they, little by little they will try to change things. You know, think about Ozanam. Uh, Ozanam was alone huh, with a few teachers in Paris. But little by little, you know, it takes time to influence even the Catholic Church. The first encyclical was written 50 years after. You know, we must be patient, but we must be tenacious, huh? perseverant, okay? Um, 
Uh, no, number three, three, three. Uh, we are one human nature, huh? equality of the species. We are one. Justice implies equality. Huh? So, to be moral, economy must be dedicated huh? to all men and to all peoples. Not only to all men in one society, but to all peoples around the world. That means we should treat the people in Bangladesh the same way we treat people in the United States. If I am Uncle Sam, huh? Sam Walmart, <laughs> if I pay my employee, I should be able to treat them more than uh, 25 cents an hour for 12 hours a day or 15 hours a day. You know? So that is, uh, everyone has a right to participate in economic life. It's a right. Because the common good is for everyone. So when a society is progressing, it's normal that everyone in the society can enjoy that progress. That is the normality and the morality. No? It is a duty to contribute because everyone contributes to the success of the enterprise. Sometimes people they say only the rich make the money. It's not true. The worker are the, are the foundation of the success of the rich. The worker are working for the rich. The worker are making the richness. Don't forget that. And sometimes we say, ah, capital. Yes, capital, material capital, and human capital. Because the work is also a value, essential value in economy. Not only material thing, but the, the moral value is the work of human. Man, worker, the worker put into economy is value, huh? a human value. So it is a, a duty. Huh? If I go to, uh, uh, to number 334, the object of economy is the development of wealth and the production of goods and services. Huh? It is a production of goods and services. Don't forget, services are also a very important part of the economy. Huh? Among the services, many you have, for example, the trade, the market. Market is a service. The, mer the merchant does not produce something, he sells. Is a, is a bridge between the producer and the consumer. Uh, so that is, uh, uh, that uh, <coughs> uh, services are part of the economy. Is there a reason why we have to pay for services? We have to pay someone. They say, I go to the, I go to the lawyer, he asked me to pay. It's normal. <laughs> because it's a part of, everyone <coughs> works for the success mm -hmm. of uh, the, the progress of the country. One work because they put their money, they buy machine. Other, they, good, they give their skill, their strength, their physical. Other, they organize the transportation the, 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 of goods, etc. All that is very complex. Is the reason why in every country we have a minister of industry, a minister of trade and commerce. We, we need that the government can help to control that uh, otherwise, it will be a kind of jungle. Huh? Okay. It, it, before the, the, the government takes the, the decision to have a, a sense to uh, drive on the road, it was anarchy. <laughs> Someone did drive on the right, the one on the, on the left. You have to make a hell of huh, for coming good. It's the same in economy. So not only huh, the development of wealth is not only in quantity, of course, we have to produce more and more and more good things. Huh? Bread, for example, we, uh, wheat huh? to feed the people, rice, huh? but also in quantity, in quality. Huh? Quality. <coughs> so <coughs> when we speak about the development of goods, it is not only to eat, to be comfortable, to have a good mattress, a good house. It is also for the development of the human person, my mind, to be able to be educated, huh? to practice virtue, to have some rest, etc., to live a good family life, you know. So we cannot develop, uh, appreciate development only according to the accumulation of goods, uh, accumulation of money. In the, United, in the United Nations, every year there is a book 
Uh, you know, in the United States, you have the book we call Forbes. Huh? It is a book in which we see all the richest people in the United States. There is also a report every year in the United Nations about the quality of life of countries. The quality of life is not the same thing as the money. You can have a lot of money and have no quality of life. For example, some people, they work almost seven days a, year, a, day, a week and 52 weeks a year. They don't take vacation, they don't take care of their children, their wife. They make money, they make money, they make money. They are money alcoholic. <laughs> they want to make money. They are not happy. Their quality of life is not, even if they have a Jaguar or they drive a, a, a Lincoln, they are not happy. So the happiness is not only reduced to matter. Uh, happiness is also love, a share, a security, peace. That is happiness also. So we have to, to check. And when we appreciate a, an organization, we should not only look at the number of dollars. We should see the quality of... Huh? For example, uh, con con here we have many con religious congregations. Every five years or six years, you have a general chapter. Mm -hmm. In the general chapter, of course, you have uh, the, the report of the finances. Is it the only report you have? No, you have other reports, no? About the quality of life, spiritual life, uh, mission, etc. So that is important because in our way of thinking, uh, we are so centered on economy, we forget the rest. And watch the, the, the speeches now, the, the, they begin to fight for the new uh, next uh, presidential election. No? It, and, the, and the speech most of the time is about economy, economy, economy. Sometimes someone dare to speak about family, but it does not take a long time. Because when you touch family, you touch other problems, and you don't people like that, you know. So that is important for you when you appreciate the thing, appreciate in the global. Huh? They eat well, they sleep well, they have vacation, they can go to school, they can practice their religion, huh? and they, they have what they need. It's enough. It's not necessary to have a billion of dollars to be happy. Huh? But to have a comfortable, St. Thomas says, huh? it is necessary to have a minimum of comfort to practice virtue. If you are not comfortable, you have to sometimes to use bad means to have bread to eat. Huh? Yeah. So quality, huh? And, uh, and uh, I will say, the, uh, what is the criteria of the success of economy? It is when people are happy. <laughs> when they have what they need. It's not necessary to have a big house, a, a, a big car, a new car. No, it's what? To live together with family, to be happy, to have security. Security is very, very important. Next paragraph, uh, next part, the third part of the um, chat. Yes? Like a question on the quality of, say somebody does have a job, um, I'm just thinking of the Costco example, you know, he, he worked a lot and he was always doing his business, but it wasn't about making money, it was about the, the quality of his business and for the, the people. So technically his quality of life, just because he worked all the time and he did make a lot of money, but because it wasn't for him, the purpose of the money. Yeah. But, you know, don't forget that the end does not justify, justify the means. That means if you are a politician, if you are a businessman, don't forget the first neighbor you have to help, it is your own family. If you are never present to your children, never at home because you are always in the business, ask question. Uh, some politician, for example, they stop because they say, I am, not, I am never with my children, I want to be my family. Mm. I prefer to have a, a less salary, low salary, but to be with them, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a choice, huh? It's a choice. Well, you know, uh, work can be like alcohol, huh? We have alcoholic, we are work alcoholic. <laughs> it, it's a passion. To make money, it's like a, it's a passion. Like a, some, they are passionate for the salvation of souls, and the other, they are passionate for the salvation of wallets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is a question of prudence. Here we have the virtue of prudence. Huh? 
uh, we cannot give a general uh, 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 law. What I can say, economy must be at the service of man, of service of his family. Huh? So we have to balance my family life with my, uh, uh, my job. Hmm? If my job takes all my time, I should be attentive to see what can I do to improve that. Huh? At least to take some vacation or to take one, one day a week, I will stop. Huh? Uh, now, 336. Now, <laughs> the third part of the chapter is about private initiatives and business initiative. But number 336. Freedom in economy is fundamental value. That is very important. No? Freedom in economy is a fundamental value. So the need free market is not condemned by the church. It is clear here. Huh? It is an inalienable right to promote and defend freedom in market. But huh? what is the word on Paul II adds? Control. Why? Because the human nature is made with original sin, but that is not philosophy. <laughs> but what we know in every country in the world, every country, we find men who are greedy. Greed is a reality in every society. I will say even in Vatican. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> is the reason why the Pope is, has the mission to change, to improve the Korea you know, the administration. It's a danger to be comfortable even when I am a cardinal. I don't think everyone is like that, but it is possible. And when you study the history of the church, and you will study that in theology, you will see that we have holy Pope, and we are also other who are sinners. Huh? And they, be, they, they were good pope, as pope, but they were sinner as Christian. <laughs> that is the history, you know. Greed is a reality. Because greed is a reality, we have to selfishness. Huh? In fact, what is the source is selfishness. And when selfishness is not controlled, that becomes greed. Not uncontrolled selfishness do lead to greed. When you are young, you don't want to share your truck or your toys with your brothers. And when you become a businessman, you don't want to share with the poor. <laughs> you want to keep the money for yourself. Hmm? Okay? So every person uh, has the right to economic initiative. Everyone can create a business. Okay? Uh, that is, everyone should make legitimate use of the talents to, uh, uh, to the abundance that will benefit all. And sometimes we see some people, they create something new and they have a good success. They put their skill, huh, their ability to the service. And for that they should be rewarded. It's normal. Hmm? And should take benefit of the just fruit of his labor. Just price. Here is their just price. Huh? So it is normal that I take some initiative. Among one economic initiative, very important, is labor. Labor is an economic initiative. No? When you work for, you hire yourself for a company, it is an economic contract. No? It is an economic initiative. Okay? But the state has the moral obligation no? to enforce limitation. If there is no limitation, there, is, there are abuses. To avoid abuses, we must have an authority. And the goal of authority is to respect the common good. Uh, otherwise, it's funny, though, under Pope uh, Francis, he said economy sometimes is like a, a glass. And when the glass is filled, the poor should benefit of that. But the glass is always growing. <laughs> <laughs> and the water does not go outside of the glass. Number 337. <laughs> So necessity of the creative dimension. Uh, it is necessary that uh, we create men as a imagination, men as the power to, some, to do something new, to make something new. And one of, of that capacity of creating something new is business. 
So in business, it is a, a part of work, a part also of imagination. Uh, imagination. Okay? For example, 50 years ago, it was a, a must for a student to have a typewriter. Taka, 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 taka. Huh? I use that and hours and hours and hours. Huh? Today, no more typewriter. If you want to, f to find a typewriter, you go to the museum. Huh? <laughs> But you have another kind of instrument, we call a computer. Why? Because man uses his brain. Man uses his intellect. Man uses his skill to improve the way of working. And now we have computer. Fifty years ago, when I saw the first computer in my life was to exhibition in Montreal. And Air France, huh? Air France, big company, they have a computer. 64 kilobytes. It was a marvel because everywhere in the world we were able to buy ticket, reserve our place on the plane. It was the first time I saw a computer in my life, from my own eyes. Today, 64. <laughs> but at that time it was, why the progress? The economy is based on the human person. Is not the money by itself transform a typewriter into a computer. Man is at the center of economy. Man is the promoter of economy because he is intelligent and free. That is a good example. From the typewriter to the computer. If that is not made at random, it's not the fruit of chance. It's the fruit of, word of the intellect and the will of man. And it's a proof that economy is not depending on uh, the, it, it, the progress of society, is not depending on matter. You know, Marx, what he says, huh? all the scriptures, social structure, the values, all that depend on economy. No, it is men who run the economy. And take that example from computer, or from your first, your, your pencil, to the typewriter, and from the typewriter to the computer. Um, <laughs> so man must use his intellect huh, for progress. And the first resource of wealth is man. Is not copper, is not gold, is not, uh, is not rice, is not wheat, is man. Without man, we cannot use the thing. Sometimes we forget that. And when we put as the first, uh, at the center of everything, economy, we are on the right track, on the wrong track. On the wrong track because the center of economy, the motor of economy, is not the capital, is not the money, is not the goods, is not the copper, is not the iron, is not the steel, is not. I think we have, not a, a, we have to approve that. Huh? Okay, number uh, 338. So the criteria for a moral business is that uh, 338. Uh, what are the criteria for uh, the morality of the business? Well, first, he said, the value of a business must be measured at the capacity of the service of the, to serve the common good. Uh, to serve the common good, the first criteria. Huh? Through production and, uh, and services. You remember, production and services. Production, distribution, and consumption. Huh? Okay. And uh, a business is not only a society of capital goods, but also a society of person. A business is not a society of money and goods, it is a society of person using money, using machine. But it is a society of person. Okay. So we cannot have a, we are here against materialist conception of economy. I'm totally opposed to that. No? Okay. Uh, number 339. Second criteria is the criterion is the product preoccupation for the common good. A business must be a good for everyone in the community and not only at the service to serve only personal interest. And the church proposes four models of uh, uh, serving the common good, form of, the, of business at the service of the common good. The first model, we spoke about that last class, is the cooperative enterprise.
Hope jeg renser det på deg. Takk for det. Hope jeg renser. For eksempel, jeg er en feit utrolig vik. Vold der jeg går. Vold der jeg går. Go visit that on Wikipedia. You will see how a priest, a simple priest of parish, creates an empire. A simple priest in a parish created a great economic empire. But an empire is not a capitalistic empire, it's a cooperative. A co like in Canada, I spoke about that also, Desjardins, the popular Credit Union, if you want in English, Credit Union, Caisse Populaire, the Germain. <coughs> they start from the little dollars of poor farmers in Quebec, in the, every parish. They have their office in the sacristy or in the basement of the church. And now they, they are one of the most, the strongest bank in, the, in North America. Yes. Knight of Columbus, another example. The Knight of Columbus, they are a good example of cooperative. Knight of Columbus. That is, it, that is interesting. In fact, the Knight of Columbus, they are heretic in the regard of capitalism. Capitalism. Because capitalism is not for that. Capitalism is the, the big capital create, not is the little capital. And to protect widows, because 100 years, 50 years ago, many young men died at the age of 30, 35, because the condition of working was were not at all good for health. And to protect them, he created an insurance company. A simple priest. A simple, he died, he was young. Interesting. Mondragon, a Catholic priest. A Knight of Columbus, a young Catholic priest. Desjardins, a good Catholic doctor, working with priests in every parish. Interesting, no? It is by the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was a promoter of cooperative. And is still a promoter of that. No? We say in French, the petits ruisseaux form les grands fleurs. The little brooks make great rivers. No? Little by little we can create things, but we have to be so the Diary. Solidarity. And the most difficult problem in the creating of cooperative, you know what is? It is the division between the members. Everyone wants to take benefit of that immediately. And that is because they, they, in Cameroon, the bishop tried to create that kind of credit union, but it was not a success. It was a success only with women <laughs> because they put aside their money and they, they did not. <laughs> yes, brother. What's the difference between a cooperative and a labor union? Well, labor union is is, is uh, the, the it is the created by the workers to defend their rights. Huh? Okay, <laughs> but it's it's a kind of cooperation. That no, it is a part. Huh? Okay. The second is the small. Small, medium, uh, some medium size enterprise, huh? business. Small, medium size. I spoke about Tito, huh? or Taito in Yugoslavia. He was a communist, but he accepted that people can have little business, 20 employees, 20 chairs in the restaurant. 20 was the maximum. It was excellent. You go to Paris. At Paris, there is no supermarket in Paris. <coughs> if you want to go to the supermarket, you go to outside of Paris. In Paris, 3 million people, they live without supermarket. But what they have, everywhere you have a little shop for bread, another for cheese, another for sugar. And the people in the morning, they wake up, they go, they buy the bread, they go to the other, the cheese. They drink their coffee, they talk with everyone. Mm -hmm. That's the society. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, is, is a very beautiful. People who live there, they like that. And my sister lived there, I lived there. You know, it's, it's a human life. But now, what we go, you have to take your car and you have to drive 10 miles, 60 miles, uh, 6 miles, 10 miles, 
to find the parking, to go to the shopping center, to make a lot of them. And when you go to buy one thing, you buy five things. <laughs> no? Huh? You want to buy something, a pair of shoes. But with, oh, hey, shirts, oh, oh. <laughs> Finally, you arrive, you have five, six, seven items, instead only one. You consume without necessity. So, small enterprise, that is excellent. And unfortunately, the drama of many little towns in Canada and United States, it is when a big store arrives in the, in the town, all the little shops close. And those who are the owner of the, now they are the slave of Uncle Sam. <laughs> Three, another thing, a commercial undertaking featuring handmade products. Local products. That is important. Helping the people to sell what they produce by their own end. Huh? Artisanal, we say in French, huh? and made product. Craft. Huh? Craft. Be careful when you visit a town in Maine or, uh, uh, or in, uh, in New Jersey, at Lane 60 you want to buy something local. Go and see what is made. Made in China. <laughs> made in Bangladesh. No, try to buy things made by the people on the place. And for example, in Peru, I was in Peru, they created a, a kind of a cooperative. So everyone cannot sell alone, but if we put together all the women in the Andes, in the mountains, and they can sell, but they produce very beautiful things, marvelous things, but they cannot go to Lima to sell that. So they create a uh, own center for craft uh, product made by the people. And finally, a family size. Another thing the church has a favor, a family size agricultural venture. A little farm. The problem today in some countries like France, like Canada, they, they, uh, they, they merge all little farm into huge farm. What happened? Those who were the honor of their little land, they are no more the honor. They are only a worker. It's different to be honor and to be only worker. There is a dignity to be honor. So the church, in fact, what is good here is just to create cooperative of, of uh, agriculture, agri uh, uh, cooperative, farm, cooperative farm. So the, the, the farmer, they continue to be the owner of their land, but they cannot buy machine, so they can rent a machine uh, about by the cooperative. That is it. Instead of demolishing all those farm, creating huge farm for Mont Monsanto, big company, uh, they continue to be the owner of their land, but they are United, and the difficulty for prison many times is there. They are so used to be the, the, the master of their land, they have difficulty to work together. We have to learn to work together. Okay? Uh, next paragraph. Uh, number 340, profit. The church speaks here about profit. The proper role of profits hmm, is to make things functioning, business functioning well. Profit is a condition to success. If a business does not make some profit, there is something wrong. But the problem is not to make profit, it's to make how to use the profit. <laughs> is the profit, will the profit go in the same pocket, or will the profit will be for the, uh, the, the, the benefit of more than only one? Huh? So the legitimate pursuit of profit must be in harmony and dignity of the worker. Harmony and dignity of the worker. The need to work. And in fact, the worker should be taking, should take benefit of that. And to take benefit of that, someone, they put together their energy to create labor union, to be able to contract, make contract with the, with the employee, 
employer and to have also have, uh, some benefit of the production they, they do themselves. Huh? So a business enterprise must be a community of solidarity. A community of solidarity. And that's a perf I feel the best model for that, in my opinion, is Germany. Because in Germany, the employers and employee try to work together, to take a decision together. And one of the consequences of that, Germany is very prosper prosperous. There is no strike. And every worker asks, when he works, he knows he works for his, the interest of the company, but also for his own interest. He's a member of the family, you know. He's a member of the company. Solidarity. Number 341, uh, they speak about usury, and 342, 342, about the problem of globalization. And next, next paragraph, the role of, the, uh, of business owners and management. So 343, creativity and cooperation. And now they speak about the business virtue. Huh? Virtues of business, diligence, industriousness, prudence, etc. To be a good businessman, according to the church, is to be virtuous. You are surprised? <laughs> yes. A businessman, if an honest businessman, is virtuous. He practices virtue of prudence. He practices virtue of justice. <laughs> he must have the courage to continue and to fight against the difficulty, etc. Number 344, the important role <laughs> of business. In fact, uh, we cannot deny that role, so you have to read that by yourself. Huh? 345, <laughs> business owner and management must strive to structure work and promote family. So the church comes, okay, make money, don't forget, the first reality is man, and man lives in a family. The family is the future of the society. We are, 14, we are for, uh, uh, forgetting that. Huh? So we speak about honesty, respect on environment, and also political stability. A good economy favor peace. Many times, big problems like the Second War come after a big crisis, economic crisis, when people are not satisfied. And finally, the fourth part of the chapter <coughs> is uh, economic institution at the service of man. So 346, huh? the, the criterion is that Inherent use, usefulness of production. Uh, uh, a production is, use, is morally good when it, it is for the service of man. Here we can condemn, we call it dumping. Huh? dumping. We prefer to throw to the garbage a new car than to a uh, uh, new car, uh, not sold, uh, so we cannot make the price low. Artificial, we, we, con we control the free market. Not the state, but the, the business, the monopoly. Here the danger of monopoly. Huh? So a competitive market is necessary, a good, it is necessary to, to compete. Competition is, in itself is not bad, but we have to respect the laws. You know, when you play football, you have to respect the laws. Huh? If you go some bad, uh, huh? uh, you know, let's see. It's not, uh, <laughs> we won, but you know, I mean, the, the other team, the, after the game, they cannot work. They cannot walk because their, their, their bones are almost broken. Huh? <laughs> okay, so 348, a criteria of the moral value of the market. So the market is for men. Uh, uh, 49, 349, the profit cannot be the only end of the market. I spoke about that. B, the action of the state, of the control of the state. Principle of subsidiarity. The state must help, not, not control, but help first the, the, all the uh, different level of uh, authority or level of <coughs> activity in the society. Control them if they have abuse, etc. You can read that by yourself. Huh? <coughs> and the state creates a general f uh, framework, framework that means we must, we, are, we must have laws. Market needs laws. Free market needs laws. Control free market. Okay? Otherwise, what will happen? It will be anarchy. 
and the, the dishonest, uh, and, and, and uh, they will take the control. So, um, in fact, the, the, the state is responsible for the common good in the society. It's normal that the state control uh, a market. No? And must encourage them. A uh, 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 thing attached to market is the, is the problem of taxing, tax, taxation. But yes, you know, taxation is, is a necessity. We can leave it together. We cannot imagine a country without any taxation. In paradise, huh? not on earth. Huh? And finally, the last paragraph, the role of the intermediate bodies and the role of those who, between the government and the individual, play a role in the society. It can be a school, it can be an hospital, it can be a business, it can be a mode of transportation. All those instances in the society are, are for, the, uh, for the good of society. So I invite you to read uh, that, that, uh, that uh, and finally, the savings and consumer goods uh, are, to, uh, to, are to, um, to educate, I will say, the purchasing power. We are the consumer. We are the purchasing power. And that is, it, it, it is a motor. You know, the motor economy is the businessman who has the machine. But the motor economy is the consumer. When people consume, economists, uh, uh, capitalists are happy. <laughs> and when at Christmas this year, or last year, they consume less, they are very sad, and sometimes they are obliged to close some, uh, some store because the, 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 the business was not functioning well. Not because they did not produce, they have a lot. Of, the store is filled with products, but the product, they are not here, they are not there. We have a good example of that happened recently in Canada, in, near Montreal. It is the Target, you know, Target, the big company, American company, Target. And Target bought an old, uh, old uh, store and to create a new, new store. And I went there, it was beautiful, everything, but there was no client. They were not able to attract the consumer. Incredible, it's true. Con conclusion, after one year, two years, we close all the store. And there was millions of dollars. Because economy is not only the, 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 the power of the, of the businessmen. The first businessman putting money in the wallet of the big businessman is the consumer. Is this you? Finally, who is controlling the economy is the buyer, the consumer. And sometimes we forget that. But the company are not stupid. They invest millions of dollars only on advertising. Because they know they cannot live without attracting the consumer. Because the consumer is also a uh, mother of economy, very important. Okay, so next time we continue uh, uh, about uh, the nation and international relations. God bless.